my name is Brian Royal with uh, Mainspring Retail Solutions. Uh, I'm joined by Bill Flat, who is our CP Shop Development and Implementation Manager. Uh, we're here uh, because RCS has invited us today to talk about our product, uh, CP Shop. CP Shop is a WooCommerce website fully integrated with NCR PowerPoint. Uh, we built this product a couple of years ago when NCR discontinued the NRO platform to help ensure that our customers still had a good way to sell product online. Um, CP Shop is a full web integration into CounterPoint. You maintain all of your items, your pricing, your inventory quantities in CounterPoint. Uh, changes to those items uh, and new items and refresh stocking levels are pushed uh, from CounterPoint up to the website. And then orders from the website are pushed down into CounterPoint's order management system for fulfillment. So any customer information gathered on the website is sent to CounterPoint and vice versa. And so uh, CP Shop truly allows your web presence to be an extension of your brick and mortar store. We spent the last few years really enhancing the product and rolling it out to new and existing NCR CounterPoint customers. But today we find ourselves in a unique position uh, to help retailers continue doing business while the world is locked down. So we worked over the last few weeks to really streamline the startup process. Uh, we've developed template sites that are easy to roll out and can help you get online quickly. Uh, we've developed pricing models that allow spreading startup costs over a period of time. And we've modified our staffing model at Mainspring to ensure everyone is focused on the current crisis, which is helping retailers continue to do business. So, um, you know, that's just the, the 50,000 foot view of CP Shop. Bill is going to uh, be able to show you what's under the hood and kind of give you a, a taste of how it works. And we'll both be available for questions uh, on this webinar or afterward if you want to send your questions to RCS. Uh, we'll make sure that we get answers to those as well. So, Bill, it's, it's all yours if you can show your screen, which we see. Oh, you do see my screen? Everyone see the mouse and you can hear me okay? Okay. Uh, welcome, folks. Uh, what I'd like to do today is a, a pretty brief demo just to go through the core features and show you how easy it's, this is to work with. And everything you're seeing is real time. This is actually a, a, a counterpoint install on a server in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the website's a live website. Uh, it's behind a firewall, so you can't, guys can't get to it, but it is a live active website hosted right alongside our other, our other sites. And when we install our components, you'll have a uh, configuration uh, form to set up CP Shop as you would like it to communicate with CounterPoint. So when you first come here, this will be blank. You'll click e-commerce and you'll select the store, station, and drawer as the primary place will drop the orders in when they're placed online. This can be your regular store or it can be an e-commerce store. Ours happens to be a secondary store that uses the primary warehouse inventory location for its inventory quantities. You have several options for taking payment. Uh, any payment processor you want to use online can interface with WooCommerce, we can interface with. Uh, online credit card processing is done with someone like authorized.net. What this means is when a client purchases their item online, they pay upfront at the point of purchase and their, their card is charged for that full amount at the time. Uh, you can interface with the integrated credit cards with CounterPoint for secure pay by selecting one of these options. And what happens with this is the card is encrypted and dropped into CounterPoint where it's tokenized with secure pay. And that card will be used and charged only at the point of release of that ticket. It gives you the ability to make changes to the order. It also gives you the ability to do validate returns without having a card present. All the, all the normal functionality of, of secure pay works with this product. You'll also see PayPal and AR, and we also have an AR interface, and I'll discuss that at length uh, during the demo. Some additional fields to deal with shipping and how you're going to do shipping, and then some uh, how, which name you want to use for your, your short name on the items. And then also, uh, if you're going to allow guest checkout, you choose a single guest for guest checkout, and that guest is used for all guest checkouts, but the billing and shipping address are appropriately used uh, for each order. And of course, this base tax code is if you do customer pickup. That would be your local tax code that you use for your local store if they're gonna to come to you and do customer pickup. Customer pickup for a single location is free with our product. Uh, we do have a pick a pickup location for multiple locations where you can actually choose which location you want to pick your products up at. So I'll, I'll hit save and that turns on e-commerce. 
And the next step is to build your category structure for e-commerce. Uh, this is a dress shop and was one of our clients, one of the first ones to go on our product. And uh, they have categories and subcategories. These are different than the e than the regular item categories because you might want to put certain products in different categories or in multiple categories. So you can easily create new categories just by right clicking and saying test category, for example. And that adds, whoop, I've already got that one. We'll do test two. You can give it an image which can land on the landing page for that category. And you can also give it a long description. I've got several garden centers who use this. They've got an image for the different categories and they've got a long description about what those products are. You click OK and you'll see that has been added as a category to which we can now assign items. You can do bulk assignment if you've marked all your items e commerce already, or you can do it one by one, which is what I'm going to show you. So it's real simple to make those categories. And once those are made, you'll start making your items. On the items tab, and I'll pull up a uh, item that uses all the descriptions. This is a necklace and you get a choice of price one or price or regular price for your e-commerce price. And that's a global setting. Uh, we will in the future uh, have price one through six available uh, as a choice for e-commerce price. Um, the next thing is I've marked this as my e-commerce description. This is what we use for our title description. And we'll see this in a moment when we get online and look at this particular item. And I've got a number here because I often change this in a demo. And so you can see if we catch it just right, we'll get a synchronized change and that'll change for that item online as well. So there's your, your e-commerce description. And we chose, uh, we give you a choice of any of these descriptions that you want to use for your e-commerce description. Most people use additional one, two or three because it'll take 80 characters, whereas, uh, the regular description only takes 35 characters. So it's kind of limited in length if you want to have a longer title description. The next uh, tab, which you don't have in your system unless you have e-commerce turned on, is the e-commerce tab. And when you arrive to here, you'll have, this will be blank, you'll select e-commerce. You'll, you'll select what you want to do for a, an, an HTML description or a long description. And this can have HTML code wrapped around it in CounterPoint. And I'll show you this special feature when we get on this item. This is actually a link to an external or internal site. I've got folks who have uh, planting instructions or, or planting videos they're linking to from a, for their YouTube page. And they're also linking to external vendor sites. I've got a sporting goods store who it links to Columbia and, and Osprey and other sites to show how to use and set up their products. You can preview that here, so how it will look on the site. This piece doesn't preview here, but I'll show you how that looks online. You'll save that. You'll click Edit Categories and decide which categories you want to show your product in. I have lots here, and I often delete one as well when I'm here to show you that when we delete this in a few minutes, that will no longer be published in that category online. If you want to add it to a new category, I'll add it to ring, well, Rings is already there. I'll add it to Purses. And the next publish or next synchronization, it'll be added to those categories. You can close that. We have one other description, which is a note description. And I do have HTML code wrapped around this for bullet points. And this is just here as an example to show you how you can do HTML code. You don't have to use HTML or no HTML to do any of these descriptions. What you type will be what you see online. So I'll close that. And when I save this item, the next synchronization, those changes are made. For item images, you'll actually just drop that image as item number.jpg into the item images directory. And you'll see here's my sample images. And I'll go down to where I've got some, um, let's see, let's do, here we go. I've got a shirt which actually has different colors and you'll name the images with item number, house top, the color, et cetera. And if you've got a hyphenated color, you'll put a dash in between it. And these will publish up to the item online and will change the image when you choose that grid dimension when you're buying the product. So let's go out and look at this particular product online. And we'll do dare, which is the necklace. And this has not changed yet, but it will shortly within the next five to 10 minutes or so. I think I've got mine set to five minutes. This is just a basic template with no modifications done to it. Uh, we can take you, we can give you a link to the, uh, our website to go look at uh, the, the gallery of the different templates and how people have modified them. 
but this is the additional description one, which we're using for our, our name description. The note description is here. If you don't use this description, everything just moves up a little bit. You will not notice that I have my internal SKU, which is optional. You don't have to display that to the customers. I've also got the quality in stock, and this is also optional. You have a, we have a document on to, for you to decide how you want to publish uh, quantities and manage those quantities if you do run out of stock. And I've just got two images published here, and uh, I want to show you the rollover zoom. These images are, you should make all your images the same shape, square as preferable, so that they all look the same on, on the website. And then this is the HTML description. And you'll see here, that's the external link, which actually takes you to another page on this website. It's not a bad idea to do if you wanna do some cross-selling. And you can do all that work in CounterPoint. You can copy that link for this product, which is this link right here, and put that inside of CounterPoint. And you can have a link to another product on your page. So I'm gonna add that to my cart. And, I'm gonna show you an alternate unit item as well. This is a shirt. Let's go to the alternate unit here. This is an alternate unit item in CounterPoint where I sell an apple for $50, but I can also publish five additional units for this product using the alternate units feature of CounterPoint. It's simple to do. You turn on the units, you click prompt for unit. That tells us you wanna publish those units online. And as long as the unit has a price, we will publish it online. So there's lots of ways to keep certain units from not going up that you just want to sell internally. So let's go look at this unit online. We'll do Alt-1. And so this item publishes with my price range. And if I want to choose an each, I can add that to my cart. And if I want to uh, choose, say, a case of those, I can add that to my cart as well. And if you are using tracking quantities online, uh, it will tell them if you don't have enough to fill that 12 case order right there. So if I only had 11 of those, it would tell me that I don't have enough in stock, you can only order 11. So I've added those to, let's see, did I add to my cart? I missed, maybe I didn't push that button hard enough. There we go. Now I've got all three items in my cart. And we will have one other item type I wanna show you, and that would be the uh, shirt. Let's close this one. There's the alternate unit and the shirt. This is a simple gridded item. I'm selling it for $25. I do uh, uh, have contract, or not contract prices, but grid level prices entered for this product. We do fully support grid level pricing if you've got the advanced pricing for grids. Um, my grid looks like this. And uh, these are the colors that I sell. And we will also publish individual SKU quantities or individual color quantities online. So if they choose medium, yellow and you don't have it in stock, it'll say out of stock, or it just won't be a selection for them, it's your option. And you'll see there's my primary image, and I've of course got five or six other images. So let's go look at a gridded item online as well. Here we go. You'll see I've got a range of prices because that is a grid level pricing. And I'm gonna choose to get a medium and I'm gonna choose to get the pink shirt. And that changes the image. Uh, you have full control of what images you put up. Uh, it, you can have multiple images for other products too. If you don't wanna use just colors, you can have multiple images for any of your products like a front and a back or something like that if you wanna show different details about your product. And you'll see I've got 501 of these in stock. But if I switch to say a large, I've only got 50 in stock. And I'll add that, add that to my cart. So I'll go to checkout now. And again, this is just a standard checkout screen. Uh, we do uh, have an option to fully integrate gift cards. You can buy gift cards online and use gift cards online. And those same gift cards can be used in the store as well. So if you've sold a gift card in your store, they can go online and use it and vice versa. Um, so I'm gonna run through and uh, do the checkout. Gotta put my phone number in. And you'll notice some additional things down here. We've got, I've got local pickups selected now because that's what most folks are doing. And I just do flat rate shipping on my site. And I have clients who do delivery. So I've, I put that in there and they do free local delivery. So how do you configure shipping is, is anything that you can use for WooCommerce in general, you can configure and we can interface with that. 
If you have a weighed carrier like UPS or FedEx, you will have to populate the weight field in all of your items on CounterPoint for it to calculate the shipping for you and check out. Now, I have some extra shipping charges here because we had a, a client who's a kitchen store that sells uh, uh, specialty charcoals that are 20 pound bags, but they only cost 20 or $30, but it costs almost as much to ship them. So they charge extra freight for those above whatever the normal shipping calculation is. And you'll notice too, this tax rate is based off of uh, local pickup, which is in Oklahoma, but if I tell it I wanna ship it instead, it'll read my tax rate for here in Georgia and change my taxes for that item. So it will recognize if you have nexuses in other states where you have to pay taxes, you can configure all that, it'll work just fine for you. And uh, what you're seeing on this screen is a credit card saved in my browser and not on your website. You have no responsibility for maintaining security of credit cards on your website. This is authorized.net or an online credit card, uh, which is I'm gonna use just for our testing. If you have integrated credit cards, you would actually key your credit card number in. That would be dropped into CounterPoint. A pre-authorization would be made and a tokenization done and attached to the order for use only on release. And that, that is uh, good for that order. As long as the order is open, you can add items to it and or uh, subtract items to it and only bill when you release a ticket. I'm gonna place this order. And what's happening right now is we're reaching down to CounterPoint and sticking that order in CounterPoint. And um, when the little spinning box stops, we have an order number, it's what the client sees. They get an email with the details of the order and as many people as you like in your organization can get an email that says you've got a new order. So I'm gonna go to CounterPoint and open up ticket entry. You can use any of the methods for fulfillment in CounterPoint, batch processing, ticket entry, touchscreen ticket entry, or order management. And I'll just use process order. And there's the order we just placed. You notice my units are here and my grid dimension is there. And now you just work this as a regular counterpoint order. I'm gonna release this. I'm gonna select all lines, although you could just select one or two lines if you only, if you only had those to fill. You could choose to back order or cancel the other lines. And I now have a ticket and I'll just complete the ticket. The email that they give comes down. So if you wanna email this ticket to them, you can use the email processes in CounterPoint to email that right to them. If they're a guest checkout, you will see the guest checkout email right there that they submitted online. And of course, your standard invoices can be used. Everything about the CounterPoint side of this process is, is, is regular CounterPoint, nothing's customized. And the goal was to make sure that the folks that already know how to use CounterPoint can use this product instead of doing double entry of their products. And uh, there's not a lot for you to learn other than just how to mark those items as e-commerce. I wanna briefly talk about gift cards and AR payment. Uh, you can purchase gift cards online and uh, you would enter the amount of your purchase that you wanted to make, the recipient's email, and the message you might wanna send the recipient, and then your details and your credit card information. This is an instant purchase and does not come down to CounterPoint for authorization. It actually uses authorized.net online because as soon as this email is delivered, that, that gift card is activated. And a gift card would look similar to this with your logos on it. They would get an email with whatever details you want to send them. And the barcode is actually a barcode. And you'll notice that that's not just a sequential number. It's a, it's a, it's a 15 digit randomly generated number. So people can't just go and enter eight for say, per se and, and see if that gift card is good. It'd be real hard for them to, uh, to, to um, use, uh, to just grab the next number. Also, when you use this gift card online, we look down into CounterPoint at that moment in time to make sure that card still has a value. So there's no way for someone to use both the gift card online or in the store at the same time. For our AR, for folks who are interested in the AR interface, we actually do have the ability to take an AR payment online. That currently comes down as an open credit. We're finishing up development soon to where you'll be able to choose which documents you want that payment to apply to, but for now it comes down as an open credit, which you would apply in your month end process. And uh, if I go to my account, if you use AR, you can actually look at your Last AR statement, you can pull that down as a PDF. Mine's pretty simple, let's see, there we go. And then I'll hit click download. And there's our statement. 
I haven't printed a new statement in a while, but your NCR partner can help you with how to make these statements print the disk and counterpoint. That's actually what we're pulling up is the last statement that you process for that client. And if they want to be able to see open items online, you can click on open documents and see open documents online. All the way down to your actual balance. With the AR feature, you can restrict them from buying through their AR balance. It will tell them that their balance is, is not uh, enough to process the order. Or you can just let them charge and you can take care of that once you get the order in your system. You also have an option to be able to do a gift card check online to see what the value of a gift card is. Let's see if this one I have here actually still has a value. There we go. That one does not have a balance in CounterPoint now. And that was a live check uh, instantaneous down into CounterPoint to see if that gift card has a value and that one does not. Um, that concludes most of the demo and I can talk to you guys about individual questions you have, but the, the main thing I wanted to, to, to get across in today's demo was the ease of operation. You, your, your clients already know how to use CounterPoint and it really is just these four boxes that you've got to work with. Uh, the customers are, can optionally go up from CounterPoint automatically and have accounts created and emailed, or you can just, just have the clients sign up for new accounts when they go online. When a client's signing up for an account online, if their email already exists in CounterPoint with a, cert, with a customer, we will match them to their current customer, and that'll be what they use from now on when they log in online. So with that, uh, I'll turn it back over to uh, Ryan and uh, field any questions you guys may have. Sure thing. Uh, we've had a few come through. Uh, one of them was answered by uh, Brian online, but I don't know if everybody can see this, so I'll ask it again, and maybe Brian or you can answer. Um, they want to, Nick wants to know if CP Shop uses the CounterPoint API or is it a direct integration? It uses, currently it uses both. We use the NCR API and our custom API for a lot of our custom features. And we're probably a year or so away from uh, stopping the use of the NCR API completely so that we haven't got to rely on them for any development. Great. Um, and then another question, I'm not sure if this was answered. Um, for sales to be reflected online, do you use the contract pricing, et cetera, in CounterPoint to determine the sale and the price online? That is an option. Okay. We have a contract, I didn't talk about the contract price interface, but that will honor contract prices with the exception of quantity discounts. And that is a feature that will be developed in the future. But yes, we have a method to use, um, to put items on sale. And we're gonna look at one user for that sale and uh, pull up all those prices and give that to everyone. Alternatively, if you wanna have, I've got, I've got janitorial supply stores and, and other companies who do special prices for all of their clients. And when they log in with their user, they will see their CounterPoint prices, the same as they are in CounterPoint. Great. Um, is CP Shop PCI certified? And can you just talk about PCI certification a little bit? Well, the, the, I would have to refer you to Comitize for PCI certification, our web host. And uh, everything about NCR is PCI certified. Uh, we send the credit card numbers through a, an SSH packet and deliver it to the API and it becomes what you would call a card not present entry on your system and gets tokenized. Uh, the credit card numbers are never stored on the site and I believe that uh, Comitize has a PCI letter of, of, the, of their, they call it a uh, chain of custody of that credit card number that I'll have to refer you to. All right. Um, can you specify which customers can use AR? Yes, it uses the same functionality as CounterPoint. So if your mark is an AR customer, uh, you can, uh, you'll be allowed to use AR online. If you want to prevent someone from using it that is an AR customer, uh, you can also undo allow orders and we honor that and won't let them place an order for AR online. But your balance uh, is, is sent up with uh, the AR and, and stored so that you can see it online. And, uh, and we do honor, uh, you, you have the option as to whether or not you want to decline or accept orders based on their balance. Okay, Sharon, if you have any follow-ups, please let me know. Um, Nick had a follow-up to the PCI. He wants to know, is the custom code slash API certified? 
Okay. We don't use any custom code for the uh, credit card interface. It's all NCR code. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Matthew wants to know, will this work with CounterPoint alerts? CounterPoint Alerts is a third party product that works on CounterPoint and we've customized nothing about CounterPoint to make this work. So I see no reason why it would not. Uh, we have one table for the standard install that we've, we've modified and we're gonna stop doing that soon because we found another method to update the order. So this is all external from CounterPoint. So whatever you have going on in CounterPoint, if it looks at orders to do alerts and quantities to alerts, it'll keep working. Right. Just to clarify that a little bit, uh, these these do come in as regular orders for CounterPoint. They're processed as actual sales for CounterPoint. So any CounterPoint alerts that are configured to look at, you know, standard CounterPoint pieces like that will still continue to work. Uh, it's, these aren't coming into custom tables. It's it's full CounterPoint functionality. All right. Um... I'm not seeing anything else come through. If anybody has anything else, oh, maybe we just got something. Do you support any reporting features um, versus WooCommerce reports or CounterPoint reports? Well, everything from CounterPoint is standard, and everything that's available in WooCommerce for reporting, including their, their you know, they got a basic dashboard, but there's lots of add-ons you can add on to WooCommerce. This is a standard WooCommerce site and not a customized site. This is your standard WooCommerce dashboard. We have an extension here, here, and a few pages for the gift card and AR payment sections. But other than that, whatever you can bolt onto a WooCommerce site, as long as it doesn't interfere with our products or our customer management, meaning the synchronization process, we've not found it uh, to be a problem. We had a few extensions in early on that had issues because they tried to manage categories or things like that. But it's a regular WooCommerce site and all the documentation available is online and all the extension, the whole extension market is all available to be used. You'll see I have some reporting over here. Just, I just have the basic items installed for our site. Great. Um, there was a su suggestion about additional features such as shipping, et cetera. Any, any kind of uh, neat features that you guys offer that you'd like um, to talk about? We have pick a pickup location to where if you have multiple sites, this is one of our clients in Calgary and they do a, they have about 15 locations. I think that was the last amount they had. And you can actually scroll down and pick the location you want to have the product. You want to pick the product about that. And that will notify that person at that location. They've got a new order. We deliver that to their counterpoint system. If it's a WAN system, if it's multi-site, it works as well, but it takes replication to get the order down there. But if it's a WAN system, it'll be directly in their store station and drawer. They'll get the email and someone at the home office get the email as well. And that's how we, uh, and that's pickup, that's location pickup. Uh, but any of the other things that uh, the people have done, I've got, there, there are shipping interfaces online where they can use the uh, WooCommerce interface to actually generate their shipping labels. All that's third party products. And that's why I say all the third party products are available to you. We focus on just moving the items and customers back and forth and the orders down. Great. Um, I have one more, another uh, PCI. I'm going to read this directly from the question just so I don't mess anything up here. API touches CounterPoint. CounterPoint falls into our SAQ for PCI. Any code that touches that database needs to have a PCI SAQ and follow PCI standards. Yes. Again, I'll have to refer us to Acomatize for where the process is. Okay. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I completely understand what you're saying, Nick. And uh, we do have documentation from Acomatize that's going to show that. So instead of referring you to Acomatize, we, we can reach out to Acomatize, get that, and we'll provide it through our CS. Um, because it's the it's the integration piece. It's it's coming from the website that you're talking about uh, as it comes through the API and then hits counterpoint. So what you're looking for is some kind of documentation that says that we are PCI compliant there, and they've got that on the commentized side. So we'll we'll reach out to them, get that, and provide to you through RCS. Great. Uh, Nick says thanks. That answered his question. Good. 
Uh, anybody have anything else? I would encourage you guys to go look at the showcase on our cpshop.us and you'll see some examples of the varying templates we have. Uh, these are actual live sites. You can log into them. You can communicate with them if you like. Uh, they're good users. A lot of them have been with us for several years. Some of them are brand new and uh, we're real happy with how things are working. All right, it looks like we have a question from Sharon. She wants to know if they have to have the integration with Blackbaud Risers Edge NXT. I don't know what that is. Uh, so uh, we don't have an integration currently with Razor's Edge, but uh, we've, we've talked with Razor's Edge uh, a number of times and building an integration would not be all that difficult. That's not available yet though. All right, um, and just so everyone knows, this uh, webinar was recorded and I will email you uh, contact information and web, web addresses and the recording as well. So if you missed anything, it'll be available to everyone who registered. Um, doesn't look like we have any, any more questions. Um, Bill and Brian, I appreciate your time. Uh, everyone else, if you have any further questions, we are here to help, whether it's uh, Mainspring or RCS. So please reach out and we'll be sure to get right back to you. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having us. Oh, thank and thanks you. everybody for attending and, and listening.